Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. It is so great to see all of your smiling faces out there in YouTube land. And welcome to this, the latest video in our series that we call Quick Tips, where I cram as much of my scuba diving expertise as I can into a video five minutes or less. And this week, we're talking the difference between yoke and din. So follow me to the overhead and I'll give you the breakdown. I have here for you two of my all-time favorite regulators. On the left is the Scuba Pro Mark 17 with a G260 tactical second stage. And on the right is an Apex XTX 50. For me, both masterpieces in design, both in my top 10 of best breathing regs I've ever used. This video is not sponsored by either brand. Uh, I've stripped away all the other hoses just to give you a better look-see. Um, and you, it's important to note as well that both of these regulators are available in DIN or Yoke. You could buy a Mark 17. This one is Yoke. It's also available in DIN and vice versa for the Apex. This one happens to be DIN. It's also available in Yoke. Later in this video, I'll tell you which dives I use which regs on. But first, let's go over the basic differences between Yoke and DIN. The first most obvious difference is how each regulator connects to your scuba tank. Yoke, otherwise known as A-clamp, fits over a yoke tank and is tightened at the back. So with the O-ring part of the tank valve. DIN, which stands for Deutsche Industrie für Normung, the German standards organization which first developed the system, actually screws into the tank valve directly with a 5 8 standard thread and the O-ring is actually part of the regulator and not the tank. So that's important to know because you wanna think about what the position of the O-ring is, right? We're gonna to get to that in just a little while, but if I take the dust cap out of the yoke regulator here, the Scuba Pro, you'll see that there is no O-ring in there. There's just a metal orifice, which is actually called the yoke orifice. Then if I take the dust cap off of the DIN, you're gonna see, oh look, there's the O-ring. The next major difference between a yoke and a DIN regulator is the working pressure. Usually a yoke regulator has a working pressure of around 230, 232 bar, uh, which is about 3,400 PSI, give or take. Uh, whereas the DIN uh, standard is 300 bar, which is about 4,400 PSI. That's important to know because you need to know what kind of pressures these regulators are designed to withstand. And then that will tell you whether you can use high pressure or low pressure cylinders uh, and what your threshold is for that. The difference for the working pressures is exactly down to the location of the O-ring that I described earlier. With the DIN's O-ring recessed into the back of the tank and completely encased, it's able to handle a higher pressure. The next major difference is of course size and weight. The yoke regulator is a lot larger than the DIN. It's a lot bigger profile because it's got this huge A-clamp here. And regulator first stages are typically made out of machined brass. So they're relatively heavy, which means the bigger the actual unit, the heavier it's gonna be. So if it's a travel consideration or a packing consideration for you, uh, then probably DIN is the way to go because they're more compact, there's less material which makes them slightly lighter. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is the adaptability of your regulator system. Yoke valves are intended for yoke tanks, obviously, and DIN for DIN. However, some scuba cylinders are convertible from DIN to yoke and back again by using a DIN insert, which can be screwed directly into the tank valve to make a DIN valve fit a yoke regulator or vice versa. However, some yoke cylinders are not adaptable. Another important difference is that a DIN regulator can be converted to a yoke regulator with a screw-on A-clamp adapter like this one. All you gotta do is screw this onto your DIN regulator and voila, your DIN regulator becomes a yoke regulator. You can't do that with a yoke regulator because transferring this to DIN requires an authorized service technician. They gotta take the whole first stage apart, swap out a whole bunch of parts. So wherever you're diving in the world, if you have a DIN regulator and an A-clamp adapter, you can dive any tank that's given to you. It used to be the case that one of the deciding factors about whether you bought yoke or DIN was your geography. The country you lived in or dived in would dictate which regulator you were likely to buy based on the types of tanks that are available in that country. But with the increase in tanks that can be converted from DIN to yoke and back again very easily, most forward-thinking dive centers in the world can handle you no matter which regulator you show up with. As I said, I use both. I use this regulator incredibly frequently and I use this regulator incredibly frequently. Why do I need both? Why can't I just have one? Well, as I mentioned earlier, tech divers prefer DIN. They can handle higher pressure cylinders, the O-ring is recessed, and they're lower profile. You don't have this big chunky A-clamp knob sticking out, waiting to get smashed in an overhead environment, disturb that O-ring, and all of a sudden you've got a catastrophic gas loss on your hands. To give you some idea, I've got about 
20 sets of regulators and only two of them are yoke. I also teach my students right from open water and all the way up to use the DIN system because no matter where they're coming from or where they're going to dive, if they understand DIN and can use an A-clamp adapter, they're good to go wherever their dive adventures take them. I do, of course, explain the advantages and disadvantages of both. For recreational dives here in Florida, my wife and I both use yoke regulators because they're quick and easy to set up. And if we're using the operator's tanks, they're nearly always yoke. So it's just easier, more convenient, faster. Weight isn't an issue because we're coming back home at the end of the day. Don't forget to let me know in the comments down below which style of regulator do you use, which do you prefer and why. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed that rundown on yoke versus din. If you did, if you learned something from it, give it the old thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already and you want to improve your scuba diving knowledge, the best thing you can do is make your next dive on our subscribe button. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. This was your Divers Ready Quick Tips video for this week from the dive locker in a raging thunderstorm. <laughs> dive safe, dive often.